Okay, Jeremy. <laughs> we got a big excavator. <laughs> now, what do you think of this? As an engineer. As an engineer. This is an engineering feat. Can you speak up, please? This is an engineering feat. Mm -hmm. uh, the planning involved just to keep this from caving in. So, any idea in terms of what it what it was constructed for? Moment. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Ken. Yes. Here we have Ken. Ken is not only a medical doctor, he's also a physicist. And so I'm just going to pan over and have a quick view. Would you like to discuss the possible acoustic properties of this location? It is an interesting formation for sure. Um, it's a stepped terrace, so it's not a smooth wall. So um, sound would have some diffraction off of these walls, but they could still be concentrated depending on the structure. I'd have to examine the acoustic uh, properties, you know, set up a microphone and then do some test sounds to kind of see how they focus but uh, certainly these walls are kind of um, semicircular parabolic uh, so they could focus sound fairly well so that would lead to with a couple of uh, big uh, flat areas you wonder if these were used for some type of ceremony of some sort um, like an amphitheater but uh, it's a very interesting feat of uh, engineering because to remove all of that material to make these terraces would take some time. Okay, well one thing I can tell you is you used to be able to go down into the center. Mm -hmm. And if someone was down in the center and you were standing here and they spoke in a normal voice, you could hear them clearly. Mm -hmm. And we had a Australian engineer with us and of all the places he saw, in Peru, this blew him away because the sound was so incredible that um, across that way there was a hummingbird on the limb of a tree and we could hear it. And he said, This is freaky. So it clearly must be the surfaces are such that they will focus the sound uh, so that you could hear distant objects normally because it will take that sound, focus it, and then focus it over here so you could hear it mm -hmm. normally. So for them to be able to construct this would take some calculation to be able to do. Um, pretty amazing. Yeah. Well the cross section does look like a par like a like a parabolic mm -hmm. dish because the distances of <coughs> the terraces mm -hmm. seem to expand as they go down. Correct. And then also the way that it's used now is uh, there's a ceremony that happens in early August and it's the celebration of Pachamama and hundreds of people come dressed as Inca from the four directions and then the high Inca stands right in the center and addresses the public. Um, also they have done scientific experiments to see if there are temperature differences between the levels and it's not significant from the top to the bottom but um, it definitely seems that, you know, it's obviously an amphitheater in shape, so it could be used as an amphitheater. And some of the stories we've heard is that it isn't simply the temperature and uh, vapor differences, but the fact that this, this could have been used as an experimental station, not for uh, the different levels in terms, again, of, uh, of heat, but actually sound that they were singing to the plants as the plants were growing, enhancing the seeds, and, there, and then taking them from this location to other locations in the Sacred Valley in Cusco. Thoughts? Not sure. Um, 
I mean, it is interesting that the terraces are not evenly spaced, so that does kind of lend that this may be parabolic mm -hmm. uh, in shape, but the actual um, rings seem to be kind of ellipsoid. Uh -huh. So um, if you're going to make an ellipsoid, you're going to have two foci, two central foci, um, maybe this one here and that one there, and then to be able to calculate how they would focus the sound um, would take some would take some mathematical knowledge. So um, you would also have to know the properties of the air um, to figure out the wavelengths. So you would have to know temperature, humidity, all that sort of stuff. But those may be secondary effects, and you could do a rough calculation to kind of figure out the radius, the step terrace, and all that. Um, but it would take some mathematical and some physical knowledge of uh, acoustics to be able to do that. Okay. So, well, this is... Um Supposedly, this this is a volcanic crater, mm -hmm. and there are three of these here. This is the big one, mm -hmm. then there are two smaller ones over there, but there's nothing in, I think, South America like this. Yeah. In the town, the possible is that the name is Muyu Urai. Muyu is a circular, Urai is down. And this is the Mother Earth uh, womb. If you see there, where is the eucalyptus? Have a two small mountains? Yeah, yeah. This is the Mother Earth um, breast. Breast. Yeah. Look, and this is the womb. And according to the archaeological scientific investigations, here put a seat. For brown, this seat. It's, it's this, no? It's a, a every seat is a reborn or brown in the mother earth womb. Uh, and uh, in the spiritual uh, explanation is this: every seat we are seat too, coming here for reborn or for brown. In the in the in this, in this uh, level in this. Uh, Pachamama Nibel. Yeah. Do you see there? Look. So there you had three experts talking. Jeremy, who is an engineer, was completely blown away by the size, scale, and complexity of the construction done by the Inca. Then we had Ken, a physicist, who believes that it could very well have and was built for its acoustic properties. And then indigenous wisdom keeper Wilco, who explained that to the Inca, it represented a womb, and therefore it could very well have been an experimental station constructed by the Inca as a way to use sound in order to enhance the growing of food. So, after all, the Inca did produce over 3,000 kinds of potatoes, and at least 200 kinds of corn. Very profound place.